is small C surgery. Hi, we're the Backstreet Boys. In small Z surgery on Nova. Hey, Smitty, how you doing? Hey, buddy, how are you? Very good, very good. Uh, are you currently in Japan? Is where are you in the world? I am actually in Singapore. We were just in Japan last week. Okay. And since Taiwan, uh, Manila, yeah. Singapore. To- Looking forward to flying down under tomorrow to see you guys. We, I honestly, I tell you what, I can't wait. I remember you announced this in 2019. I was so mad keen, and then, and, and then, it, then the pandemic happened, and then I think. If my memory serves me correctly, they pushed the dates from the start of 2020. Oh, this will be all done by the end of the year. We'll come back at the end of the year. It was like, no. And then we did 2021. No, 2020. Not. But here you are finally, days yep. away. Yep. I think I finally, I think I ended up getting rescheduled twice. Uh, and you guys, I feel so bad because you're the only country, like I said, that we've had to, we had to do that. It wasn't our fault. It was a pandemic. Look, you know so, what? Uh, you're, you're, you're days away from arriving, so everything that ends well is well. Hey, I wanted to say, I had a look at the set list. Uh, is it true that on the DNA tour, you boys are doing 33 songs? That's what it says on the, the set list website. It is absolutely true. Believe me. Can I tell are... you? I don't know. Can I, I don't mean, Harry Styles is in Australia at the moment. Ed Sheeran in Australia at the moment. They could learn a thing or two from some industry <laughs> stalwarts like you. Let me tell you that. Uh, you're... You're too kind. You're too kind. Where they they definitely are class acts themselves, and uh, looking forward to seeing Harry out on the road somewhere, maybe in in uh, down under with their, catch one of his shows. But mm. I heard he's got to get the show himself. Yeah, so. but he's not doing 33 songs. Let me tell yeah. you. Uh, when, when you when when is 33 songs on the set list? Does it? Do you have a team, a band meeting going? Oh, uh, can can our knees handle it? Should we yeah. strip it back a little bit? That's very. Uh, that's a lot for yeah. for us to do. It, it is. It's, it's always a journey, you know, a challenge to, to get into the show and, and create it and make sure we're taking care of all the fans with all the hits because, you know, if they don't hear their favorite song, you know, the singles over the years, we're, we're not getting out of that venue. They're, yeah. You know, they're, they're locked. Um, so we, we do our riot. best. To... They'll riot. They will... If the favorite song is not played, there will be a riot. Yeah. want to hear it just the way it was recorded. They don't want no remixes. <laughs> they just want to, you know, don't bring do... it back to the don't do this shit where you let the, the crowd sing. I want you to sing it. Sing the yeah. whole thing. None of this a cappella yeah. stuff. Don't don't strip it down. Don't give me an acoustic oh, yeah. version. Give it to me the way that my memory rem- 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 remembers I, it. And I get it. You know, like I say, I was a huge Michael Jackson fan, Madonna fan. I didn't, I didn't hear, you know, a thriller or, <laughs> yes. or a material or whatever the way it was. And this, you, you embed a memory into people's, you know, memory bank mm. of the song. That, that that times that they went through, you know, what was going on in their lives, their first love or challenges mm-hmm. or whatever. So, you know, I get it. I get it. So it's it's always a little bit of a challenge trying to do that. Sometimes we do have to, you know, make little medleys here and there to get everything in there. And, um, but at least we, we're, we're doing our best efforts to make sure we're pleasing everybody at the shows. Happy, happy for a medley. A medley always goes down a tree. Do you pinch yourself? Do you and the and, and the and the boys, pin, do you pinch yourselves about when you realise how many, how many years later, 25 something, 30 years later, that you're all still have the ability to pl- play sold out shows around the world? It must blow you away. Absolutely. I mean, I, I remember when we first started and I was 19 years old and uh, now going almost 30 years later, mm. uh, I definitely wasn't expecting our career to last this long. You know, it's, it's finally now that we're coming up on our 30th anniversary. You know, people are telling me and it's coming to live in a, you know, reality to me that, you know, we have solidified ourselves. I think people now know that Backstreet's back and we're not going anywhere, uh, at least anytime soon. And, uh, you know, so it's, 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 it's truly a blessing. It's, it's because of our fans. They're the ones that have supported us, stuck with us through thick and thin at the height, at the times that we weren't as on the top anymore and still, you know, and then swinging us back around again now. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's 100% due to these amazing fans of ours. Tell me, um, have you collected a lot of shit over the years? Like, like artists get like records, plaques, there's merch. I mean, I don't think there's a there's a a piece of merchandise that your face or the Backstreet Boys faces hasn't been on over the last you know twenty something years. Do you just have a a room in your house full of just shit that you've just gone? I, I can't throw that away. I've got to keep that because one day I'm going to look back on that and go remember these these days. 
Oh, believe me, if you could see my garage, half of my garage, I can't even put another car in there. Uh, once my kids, I think will be uh, well, my my oldest, who's now 14, once he turns 16, will probably be finally the time that I will get through that garage and clean out. But, you know, my wife uh, has allowed me to have two rooms in the house because she doesn't want it to turn into an Elvis shrine. Uh, my house, you know, it's just, it's, she's not down with that. Mm -hmm. So I've been blessed to have two rooms. Uh, one was our, 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 our living kind of like... Uh, playroom that on the wall I have a bunch of plaques and then around the TV I have a bunch of our awards like the Moon Mans from MTV and American uh, Music Awards and, and then as well as I have a theater upstairs and I have some plaques as well on the wall but if you can look at my garage like I said and how much stuff actually uh, believe it or not recently uh, during COVID uh, I believe it or not and my uh, irrigation pump was put inside my garage sure. we built and of course, Murphy's Law goes off at like four o'clock in the morning. So I come down to like, you know, six inches of, of water in there. And uh, it did help me do some cleaning uh, because a lot of those, those stuff I had put in like cardboard boxes and stuff like that. So I had so many Teen Beat magazines and stuff like that. I finally got a chance to go through and, and, and kind of consolidate mm -hmm. uh, some of the stuff that my mom had collected since I was 19 years old, you know, 20 versions of this one magazine that I was like, all right, I don't think I need to see the exact same one. I can go down to like one or two yes. and be okay. Um, but, now, now, obviously, I, as I said, I'm very excited. To, I've got tickets to the Sydney show. I'm very excited. I'm a mad Backstreet Boys fan. I, I, I think some of my core memories of music have been like the Backstreet Boys over the years. Uh, I was going to ask, is if I was to say to you, is there one moment in the career of the group that stands out to you? If I say, pick the biggest moment, the wildest thing, the, the moment you were like, shit, we are the biggest band in the world right now. This is crazy. Is there something that comes to mind? Wow, it's hard to pinpoint just down to one. I mean, the first things that came to my mind were when we received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in, in uh, California. Um, that was really uh, a prestigious honor um, that happened. I mean, also singing the national anthem at, at the Super Bowl in, in 2001, um, you know, for every artist, that's like an ultimate, you know, pinnacle dream of yours to be able to do the halftime show or sing the national anthem, um, as well as probably receiving some of our first uh, MTV, you know, Moon Men Awards. Yeah, well. and, yeah, I mean, we just, we've been very blessed over well, the I'll, years. It's can I, I'll tell you my core memory. If I say what the, when <laughs> I, when the biggest wildest thing for the Backstreet Boys, it was, I think the Millennium album. And you did that crazy eight continents or eight whatever it was in a hundred hours. I don't remember what it, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I remember listening yeah. to it as like a seventeen or sixteen year old kid in the radio, going, "Holy fuck, they're here, and they're going to be in somewhere else tomorrow." This is just like the craziest thing ever. Yeah, that actually is, is a good memory. It's funny because I'll never forget we had we came up with this crazy idea to do something like, "What would the Beatles have done back in the days?" Or you know, like you know who's you know, let's just create something, you know, cool and different. And so I remember we started off in Sweden because we were over there for the MTV European Music Awards. So we knocked out the first one by already being there. And then we went to Japan. And I'll never forget, we flew from Japan to Australia. And we forgot that it's different um, seasons. And so I'll never forget, we came out wearing these trench, you know, crocodile Dundee kind of like stuff, trying to be like really Aussie. And it was like blazing hot. And we went out to like Bondi Beach. And it was like, it was just like, we're out there in these boots and these trench jackets and everybody's like in bikinis and speed up. So we're like, what is wrong with this picture here? <laughs> That's an embedded memory in my head that I'll never forget. Uh, Australia back in that time. That is, that is fantastic. Now, obviously, as I said, the, the tour kicks off uh, this weekend in Australia. Uh, you got a whole bunch of shows happening around the country. 33 songs on the set list. Is there a song uh, that you are like you like roll your eye like i mean i don't want you to ruin any memories for me but is there a song that like you just go oh, again or have you have you transcended that moment to go no these are the songs that m keep us employed keep people loving us i love e each of them equally i mean absolutely at the very end of the day the second answer is what i have to go with sure. uh, because I, um you know these songs like i say have, have changed my life um, and literally in, in several ways, as well as it's, it's, it's impacted a lot of our fans' lives too. That, you know, some of these songs 
you know, I'm blessed to say it, you know, when I hear when people tell me that, you know, your music is a soundtrack to my life, that's like the most unbelievable, you know, uh, thank you that you can, you know, get from a fan. Um, but I can definitely say, to be honest, you know, quit playing games when it comes around in the set list. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get through this. And But all I do is look out at the fans and as soon as you hear boom, doom, 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 and you just hear the fans go crazy. It's just, it gives you the energy to get through any song. It's Absolutely. Just, uh, well, I just, I, you know, I want to tip my hat to you and the rest of the boys. I can't wait to see you. I, I also am excited that uh, if you think back to like the I Want It That Way clip uh, and those that really awful 90s fashion, baggy jeans are back. Who would have thought you've actually got clips that have, that they aged out and now they're back in style and in fashion. It's fantastic. Complete circle around, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Too big for us. I mean, I remember we started wearing them. It's like a couple of us could have fit in these jeans back in those days. And, uh, you know, we've... Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a couple of jackets that I swear I, I have vivid memories of watching Nick Carter singing in a white leather jacket that is 10 times too big for him. And now it's on the fashion catwalks of Milan again, so... That's crazy. That's so crazy. Yeah, we've, we've stood the test of time, that's for sure. Well, thank you so <laughs> thanks so much for the time, the chat, man. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to seeing oh. the show. Uh, and, and congrats on everything, and, and we'll see you here in a couple of days. Absolutely. Look forward to seeing you, mate. Thank you very much. Smallsy Surgery is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.